Did we go off? Welcome back, everybody. Man, first of all, last week, the sound got messed up in post-production. Thank y'all for that constructive criticism. This is what helps the product get better. This will help the content get better. I appreciate y'all in the comments. Stay in the comment section. Live in the comment section. We here because we have a, we trying to have a discussion right here. Welcome back to the business decision. I'm your host, as always. You already knowing it's me, Jaron DSB. Happy New Year! Also, how was everyone's New Year's Eve? Hopefully, everybody got home safe. Did y'all see that Georgia and Ohio State game? For the college football fans, that was crazy. That game was nuts. Stetson Bennett, motherfucker, 25 years old, still slinging that thing in college. And he was him yesterday. He led that comeback like nothing else. But next to that, talking about a comeback, how about Charlotte? We saw Charlotte return to face Ronda Rousey and win and become the new WWE SmackDown Women's Champion. After that happened, I got on all the different social media sites to see what people were saying about it. Some of you guys weren't too happy to see Charlotte again. Or maybe it wasn't to see Charlotte again. Maybe it was because how they brought her back and it ended with her getting the belt again. I agree with that. It came out of left field completely. Granted, that lets us know they needed to get that belt off of Ronda. They hadn't, this was the opportunity to do it. Charlotte was here, available. She said yes. When they came with the, uh, the opportunity, and there we have it. What happens going forward now? I mean, she ain't really, she hasn't been there in, <laughs> in a while. So you bring her back and then you put the belt on her. She's got to immediately feud with somebody. Maybe that's why the fans fe- felt the way they did. Me, I wasn't a fan of it only because I just, Charlotte's kind of their John Cena now for the women. When <laughs> when all those fails, put the belt on Charlotte. Heel or babyface, when all those fails, put the belt on Charlotte. She's definitely done enough to cement herself that way, establish herself that way as the woman in WWE. So what does this mean? It means, one, they're in desperate need of someone to kind of lead that women's division, kind of be the face of that women's division. And like I just said, Charlotte's that comfortable choice. And I have it written here also, why the hate? And maybe I'm overstepping it. It, Maybe it wasn't just hate. Maybe it was a little discomfort. Maybe it was just a rub of the wrong way. If you were going to have anyone take the belt off of Ronda, and we've seen what Ronda can bring, which isn't too much. You needed someone who you could kind of smash over Ronda in a believable way. The one person that they've kind of established on their current roster who could probably do that would be Charlotte. I'm interested to see who she's going to feud with because like I said, she hasn't been on TV. So they're going to, they've had to have been thinking of something behind the scenes. We just got to kind of wait and see and I'll let it play out. Speaking of letting things play out, Let's 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 talk about Bray Wyatt, shall we? Bray Wyatt versus L.A. Knight. When this Bray Wyatt thing first started about what, maybe two months ago now, it was a slow build. And this feud with him and L.A. Knight is still a very slow build. They haven't had a match yet. And they've been in this feud for about two months now. When are they going to have a match? That's one question I have. They introduced a new character, the Uncle Howdy, I'm guessing. People keep saying, give this a chance and let it play out. But how long are we supposed to wait? Bree Wyatt is extremely talented. If I was booking, if I was a promoter, he would definitely be a top guy. He's in that title picture, all right? He'd be in one of my major title pictures. But I wouldn't have him with all the dressings around him. All this offshoot of the Undertaker type stuff. Not necessarily offshoot of the Undertaker. It's kind of that mixed with every bad horror movie you kind of ever seen. This is just Bray Wyatt essentially creating a horror character, 
a horror story and disseminating it to all the masses of the WWE universe. And they're eating the Elmer's glue and thanking him for the ice cream, essentially, as Jim Cornette would say. I think this whole thing isn't worth the wait. I would hope someone backstage is thinking the same thing, like, how long is this going to take? How long are we going to wait? I would imagine there's a whole bunch of other storylines they have in the in the back of their minds, the writers are writing, that they could have being played out right now that could have had the rising action already, climax, fall in action, all that. What have we had since this feud started? Two premium live events, and these two haven't had a match yet. And then you introduce a new character. So there is their first match going to be a triple threat match? You kind of see what I'm saying? I'm not knocking Bray Wyatt at all. Like I said, I think he's talented. But the title of this show, the title of this podcast is The Business Decision. Step inside the mind of someone who might be in the wrestling business and just look at how this whole thing is playing out. Look at the talent you have in LA Knight and ask yourself, how much longer are you going to wait? How much longer are the fans going to wait? Because once, if the fans do start to boo, when they start to boo, when they start to get restless, it's going to kind of put a stain on both those superstars. They're two guys who are, they're reminders of professional wrestling in days past, right? They lay their shit in. They take their shit serious. They fully invest in their promos and their characters and who they are on TV. My question's here, how long will this take? And who is Uncle Howdy? I say, like, he's been introduced, but should we care? I guess now we should care because he got physical. What side is he on? Who knows? Because he thought he was on Bray Wyatt's side, but he attacked Bray Wyatt. Why did you do that? And because I asked that question, now I guess I'm supposed to have to let this play out still. This whole thing playing out, it has become played out. It's over with. Done. LA Knight is someone with phenomenal talent as well as Bray Wyatt. And we have them both in this storyline that's just going nowhere. Like, don't get me wrong. Some of this stuff would probably be good on a local network in a primetime slot. Some kind of drama action show. That would be phenomenal. But in this professional wrestling setting, on this professional wrestling show, in this wrestling promotion, we need something that we don't have to wait half a year for, for the first match. I would hope going forward, once they get rid of this whole storyline whatever the climax might be whatever the end result might be have guys who can feed off of la Knight and have him work with them and put him in a title picture put him where millions and millions of people can continually see him on a weekly basis la Knight is a star plain and simple bray wyatt also a star but when left up to his own devices as we're seeing if this is indeed his idea this whole uncle howdy and the whole bring in the spooky family in stop it those two guys are way too talented to be just dragging in this storyline that they're in now and that's honestly what i think and what i know going forward it's got to pay out after this i know it has to someone bet better be getting a belt a major storyline to lead to a number one contender shot major other major storylines because they got to be paying their dues with this one this is terrible and with this being so so bad it's the new year going into 2023 it makes me think what things do i want to see from wwe in the new year as far as champions i would love to see them keep the brand split but i would break the titles up putting them all in the bloodline defeated i get it you kind of booked yourself into a corner now in order to split up the titles you're gonna have to essentially make the bloodline have a moment of weakness consecutive ones because it's gonna have to work within the story a major title tag title and a mid title on raw and one on smackdown and keep it like that no title unifications keep the brand split with that brand split we got bobby lashley on raw Bring him back when he does come back as a heel with the Hurt Business and put that belt on him. The major title, the mid-card title, whichever one. Put it on him and let him wreak havoc. I would love to see the New Day because Big E has been out for a long time. Um, I would love to see him personally get another tag team uh, title run. And I would love to see them turn heel again. I would think Kofi would be coming towards the end here. Big E with that neck injury, 
not really sure what it looks like for him going forward, but I would love to see the New Day return as heels. I've said this before, Nick Aldis. I would love to see Nick Aldis in WWE. I would love if Christian came back to WWE. I would love if Dustin Rhodes came back to WWE. I know he said um, he's on his way out. This was going to be his last year uh, wrestling, but I think he's just pulling Tony's heartstrings on that one, honestly. I think once he gets back to WWE, that's, that'll be his final year. He'll do something with Cody, a program with Cody, whether they're feuding or uh, a tag team. I think that'll be the way out. I, I, I would think it's only fair he end his career um, in WWE, of course, with his brother, you know go out like that I think he would love it I think Dusty would love it too to be completely honest and you know what else this is probably pretty far-fetched but I would love to see program between WWE and AEW just for professional wrestling sake I mean it doesn't have to be anything crazy it can be a standalone event couple matches I mean I think it would do a lot for professional wrestling it would definitely build a lot of bridges as far as People definitely feeling comfortable being fans of both sides. People would become all like tribal with their words and their actions when it comes to essentially defending their favorite wrestler or promotion. It's cool to like both, you know, but I feel like wrestling fans like to be argumentative by nature, just like basketball fans for absolutely nothing. That's what I do hope. I would hope WWE and AEW can kind of hopefully work towards at least that one show step through the forbidden doors tony would say give us one just one 2023 just one that's all i'm saying just one and speaking of AEW and things to come in 2023 mjf versus brian danielson and this is gonna be good the match is gonna be good We don't expect, we shouldn't expect them to take the belt off of MJF this soon. It would be completely foolish to take the belt off of MJF this soon. So, what's next for Brian Danielson? That's what I had written down. Because, like I said, I don't expect them to take the belt off of MJF. Brian Danielson and Samoa Joe. That match is coming for the TNT title. And that's going to be a, that's going to be a bang. In 2023, that's like, that's the match my eyes are set on. MJF just got the belt. I think there's a big build coming in his contract ending in 2024. This, any other few that he's in leading up until that point is just keep focus on the bigger picture. 2024 is coming and it's the bidding war of 2024. MJF is going to have the triple B with him, the big Burberry belt, and he's going to sit at the negotiating table. And the perfect way to book it is on that one show in 2023 WWE and AEW does together. You have MJF come out and pick a side. But in order to do that, Triple H and Tony Khan would have to set their egos aside. Be willing to put on a brave face knowing that you just lost a superstar talent. Would they do that? Probably not. But I still want my show, WWE and AEW. Speaking of WWE and AEW... With Triple H being back in power, some former WWE guys are feeling they might want to go back. Someone who was in recent news, Miro. Miro's been off of AEW TV for some time. Where's he been? Probably talking with God. He debuted on AEW, I would say in a big way. It was kind of just a little sizzle because he was attached to Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford. What was he going to do with that? And he wasn't even, like, the main guy. He was, like, their whipping boy in a way. He was just their bodyguard. This is another guy right here. AEW's dropped the ball with. He should have came in immediately, smashed people over, won the belt, went on a tear. He eventually did win the belt after he lost the belt. He's been here and there, talking to God everywhere, and then he disappeared. And then we thought he was coming back, and then he went away again. And then he's probably coming back. But I can see why Tony has reservations about booking him because it came out that he wasn't one who wanted to do jobs for some of the AEW guys. And apparently that's a common theme with some of the ex-WWE guys over there. I can't blame him. If you're in a locker room full of guys who you know hasn't put in the work that you have, you know can't hold a candle to you in the ring, 
who can't get their shit over it nearly as good as you can. I mean, you're supposed to put them over. You're supposed to use your talent to put yourself and them over. Think about that. Put yourself on the business side of that. It's not happening. And that's what Miro said. It's not happening. I can't blame him. Now, will Tony Khan release him? No, because he's already shown that he doesn't want to send guys just waltzing back to WWE. But, I mean, you can either do that or you can just have people stewing in the locker room and soon, soon enough have a mutiny on your hands and have all your talent calling for your head. You... Try to go all the way around to not do things Vince did. But in the long run of things, people are going to end up hating you just as much as they hated Vince if you don't give them what they want. Because that's what Vince did. He didn't give them what they want. Vince gave himself what he wanted. And if you didn't fit in that picture, you were gone. Tony Khan's given all his talent what they want. But when he says no, he doesn't fit in their picture. So what happens to him? That's all I'm saying. I'm just giving you food for thought. Miro, I hope you get your release soon so you can go back to WWE. Because I know that's what you and Lana have your fingers crossed on. So I hope you get it in 2023. What else do we want to see from AEW in 2023? I want to see MJF go on that tear. I want to see MJF get in some major storylines with some major names. Just smash him over the competition until the bidding war of 2024. I want to see Brian Danielson win that TNT title. I want to see Ring of Honor become established as its own brand once again under Tony Khan. He has more than enough money and resources to do it. Why he hasn't yet, I'm not sure. Maybe higher ups at TNT and TBS don't want it and he's trying to find somewhere else. But I hope in 2023 Ring of Honor can build their own brand back up and get their titles back on their TV and they can have talent of their own. What Tony Khan's trying to do with AEW now and Ring of Honor in AEW, it's kind of muddying the water. It's got to be allowed to breathe and separate. And if you want to get Ring of Honor shit over too to this audience, we know they're the super smart audience, but it's it comes across very crowded with all these belts on TV every week. On both shows. In 2023, I would like to see some people released from AEW. FTR gone from AEW. Um, they have not been used properly. He's had some good matches in AEW, but I would like to see Samoa Joe uh, gone from AEW. Like I said, um, Christian. I would hope he'd get released. Guys like Big Show. Guys like Mark Henry. All these guys that they scooped up and just aren't doing anything back there. Or they're on their YouTube shows. Come on now. These are Hall of Fame professional wrestlers. You scoop them up from your rival and just pay them a ton of money to come essentially sit on your couch. I don't think that's cool. And I hope that Tony makes it right and lets these guys go be free. Essentially. If you love them enough, you'll let them go. I would hope that in 2023, AEW brings in some serious trainers for their women's division. Tony Khan needs to have a serious talk with Kenny Omega and whoever else is in charge of that women's division and get them some serious training. Put the women's belt back on Britt Baker. I think that's where they're going with the Jamie Hayter storyline anyways. Um, And keep the belt on Britt Baker until you have another viable option ready to be presented, ready to be presented on a national scale. Overall, and in 2023 for AEW, Tony Khan, get some help my boy. You need assistance back there. You are going to start pulling your hair from your head. We need to get you some help. You Well, you need to get you some help. We just gonna watch. If it falls apart, it falls apart. But they say if he dies, he dies. So that's that. And this is this. The business decision. You already know and it's me, Jaron DSB. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, share. Comment what you want to see in 2023 from these promotions. AEW, WWE, TNA, MLW, New Japan, AAA, CMLL, the independents, anywhere around the world. What do you want to see in 2023? I'm out of here. That's all I got for y'all. New Stocked Up Park coming Tuesday, 6 p.m. We had some good wrestling discussion on that one. Be sure to tap in.